Carol, first of all, Happy New Year. And to you. It's the first time we've managed to sit down with you this year. Um, let's start by taking a look back at 2022. Last time we sat down, we managed to do that. And I think we've had New Year's Eve where we, mm. as, a, as a football club, looked back and were actually able to sit down and reflect at what an incredible year it was for, yeah. for this po uh, football club. It was. And yeah, I think that if you... And if, if we'd have sat here this time last year, so that you know, if we'd have sat down on the 1st of January 2022 and said, what's this year going to bring? It'd have been a long time before you came up with the 365 days that we had. And it was, it was an, a phenomenal year um, it, for the club. And one of the things that we wanted to do when we first bought the club, one of the things I was very keen on, is that we started to build new memories uh, because it's it's all well and good, um, you know, talking about the the you know winning the Auto Glass Trophy and you know winning promotions and even going back to winning promotions in was it twelve thirteen that's that season, they're great. But it's time I felt it was time to now build some new memories, and so to get the Etihad so three years ago we were at the Etihad which was amazing um, and really gave me a new bar for what director's seat should be like. They were heated. They got things to, you know, um, charge your phone. And, you know, it is definitely how the other half live. We have hot water bottles here if you're freezing. Um, but, but it was an amazing day. And this year, looking at the, uh, the social media on New Year's Eve when everybody was reflecting and looking at the Vale fans, they were all saying that Wembley, Wembley was the day that, that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. And, and that gave me so much joy that it was, you know, what happened was phenomenal, but the fact that we've now given the, the fans that, you know, so that's a new memory and what a memory. And I'm with them. I mean, I'll never forget it because it wasn't just how we, it wasn't just that we won, it was how we did it. It was the fact that we were all there, we were all together and the way they played, the way that it sort of, the way they demonstrated, the way the team um, and the fans and everybody demonstrated um, the the club that we are looking to be and that, that we're we're growing as, and it was all there, and it was it was stressful. I mean, the playoff um, semi final here with the penalties. Oh my lord! I don't think my nerves have settled from that yet. Um, and certainly when they they talk about you know when do we not get you know, go into the playoffs or if we were to i said well no my nerves haven't settled yet i mean i'm you know it was it was such a big occasion and a wonderful way to get promoted but uh yeah no you don't want too many experiences like that do you let's look ahead and talk about 2023 mm. it's a new year we mm. we we carry on with the the thoughts of, of Wembley, but we can make new memories this season, um, making new landmarks as well. So started ninth in League One. It's the highest position we've started in nine years in the Football yeah. League pyramid. Um, talking about the first team and talking about the football, how, how much have you enjoyed it so far this season, seeing the team grow and gel together and, and finish the year ninth in League One? I think for me personally, um, when we started the new season, I can't say enjoying was probably the word that I would have used because I knew League Two. We'd done a, you know, a few seasons in League Two since we've been here, but I didn't know League One. So you didn't know what was to come. So that entering the unknown, um, we wanted to keep as many players as we could. They'd taken us to to the promotion. Um, the togetherness of that group was one of the major things that had taken us there. So although we wanted to add to it, we also wanted to give the players as much as we could that opportunity to step up into League One. So it, we also had, and, and I'm not moaning about this because it is a problem of success and I'm really not moaning, but it is a fact that we had no time whatsoever. You know, we had Wembley, amazing, fantastic. A week later, we have uh, Robbie and the concert and the shirt launch. We're never going to beat that shirt launch, ever. I think next year we just send everybody an email 
and just say, here, here's the shirt, move on. Because um, what can you do to do to compete with that? Um, but we had that. And then we only had a few weeks before we were playing again. Um, so it was, it was very stressful um, in that we didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what the standard would be. When you get there, there's actually a lot of um, clubs that we've played it since we've owned the club anyway that have been promoted. So there's a lot of familiarity um, and also a lot of clubs which were aspirational. So we played Sheffield Wednesday, Derby, you know, clubs like that, that you think, wow, you know, this is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal to be playing groups like that. But so you had to sort of transition, if you like, from being a League Two club to being a League One club. And our first aim was to be a League One club by right, you know, that we we are there. And I think when you start the season, the, the year, sorry, not the season, the, the calendar year at ninth, you, you're showing that you're, you're doing okay. Um, and Forest Green on New Year's Day, oh my Lord, you know, that last 10 minutes was just, well, it was phenomenal, wasn't it? It was absolutely amazing. Let's talk about the fans in that game. Yeah. Because Forest Green, uh, part of the away stand is covered and the rest of it is mm. unseated and it's open to the elements. Mm. And well, the, the elements showed up uh, on New Year's Day and the fans didn't stop and the fans didn't mm. stop supporting the team, cheering on the team. Just how important have they been and continue to be for the club? Well, you get two. You get the two fans, don't you? You get the home fans, um, and we'll talk, can talk about those separately. But let's talk about Supervale away. I mean, a and this is sort of football politics, but I strongly feel that it should be part of the EFL rules that every uh, stand is covered because it doesn't cost a hill of beans to cover a stand. Um, so I I don't like the fact that there are clubs, um, and it's not just Forest Green, and I'm not having a go at them, there's a number of clubs um, and stadiums that have open stands. Um, and that, to me, in this day and age, in the EFL, personally, I think is, is wrong. I speak only for myself, I'm not speaking on behalf of the club, but that is Carol's view. Um, so the fact that they are there, the rain is not forecast, and suddenly, we're about to build an ark, you know, because it just comes down like a deluge. Um, but they didn't stop. They didn't stop singing. They didn't stop um, cheering them on. Even at you know 80 minutes, when to be fair and honest, we were playing our best, um, and we were all a little bit. Ah, I mean, the second half we played better. The first half, you know, wasn't brilliant. The second half we start to play better, um, and so it's not as if we're you know, we're, we're winning 3 nil or something, and then they start singing. They start singing to enable us to win 3 nil, And I think that's the, the big thing for me with, with Super Vale Away. I love Sheffield Wednesday when they start singing, you're only here to watch the Vale. I mean, you know, I love the humour of the, the Vale fans and the irony. I love the fact, uh, you know, that wherever, wherever we are, you know, let's not forget Plymouth. So Plymouth away, it's a Friday night. And what have we got, you know, a couple of hundred, 220 or something. The back end of last season, we announced that we were looking at the possibility of a stand switch, which would see the away fans housed in the, uh, in the by car stand and the home fans going into the Hamill Road end. Um, do we have an update on that stand switch yet? Yes, I think that um, we still got to do it. And it isn't a case of, do we don't we can we can't we we have to do it uh, and i think that that's the first point um the fact that we've got fans with season tickets already purchased for for buy cars and secondly the amount of work that we need to do um i have to say that you know the council and the police and Everybody have been very supportive because they, I mean, particularly the police want this to happen as, as much as we do. Um, but it will be the beginning of the next season at its earliest. Elsewhere in the club, we, and it's been on social media, I think we've had to clarify, it's not the one from Parliament, as you mentioned, but Matt oh. Hancock has joined us from Burton Albion. Um, just how happy are you that you managed to get Matt into the club? Oh, I'm thrilled beyond words. But 
so as you know, when you join Port Vale, you on your first day, you have your um, first meeting with HR, and then and then you're meeting with security, and then HR take you on a tour, which is you know, physically there's the toilets, there's the kitchen, there's this, the other. It takes about an hour and a half. I did Matt's tour. It took all day. And I did the whole of Synectics, the Academy, I did everywhere. At no point did I say his surname. I just kept saying, this is Matt, because I kept thinking, I can't keep going back to, <laughs> not the one out the jungle, you know, fresh from the jungle of Burton Harvey. And I couldn't go, keep going through that over and over again. So I just kept introducing him as Matt. Um, getting Matt is huge, absolutely huge. And we're so lucky because he lives locally and has a young family. So for him, it's it's a really good, you know, life balance um, decision, um, as well as a you know good opportunity. It's not just life balance, but you know, a good ambitious decision as well. Uh, but he is so well respected in the in the industry and you look at the work that he's done at, at Burton Albion it's it is amazing and I've been in meetings with him today and he just gets it and he gets what being a community club is about he is community and CSR director of the club is also CEO of the foundation and Bez Kira that's our community company that does the social care side um, and part of his job is to really bring that cohesion between the you know, everybody um, that's at, at Vale Park and um, I actually saw some of the people from Burton on Saturday I was in Lincolnshire because I'm I'm from Lincolnshire as you know and I was at my sister's and so I went to watch Grimsby versus Burton in the cup and uh I was talking to the Burton people and they said, well, you've got your best signing of the year, haven't you? You know, getting, getting Matt, um, because they were really sad to lose him. And uh, he's, he's going to make a big difference. He's a, he's, a, he's a good egg. The community side of things for the club has always been a huge driving force behind everything we do. Yeah. Aside from obviously the, the football, because we are we a are football, football club, club first. Um, but the community stuff is, is always up there with that. What can fans expect from our community work this year? I think we're going to, well, I know, we're going to really build on the success of what we've got already. So we have Golden Valiants that come on a Thursday morning, which are a force to be reckoned with. So these are the is it over 55, over 60s. Um, and we've got well over 100 people who come to that. And so that's really combating social isolation and loneliness and building that community together i went to that well as you were there their christmas party um god that's for the brave isn't it you know <laughs> we had them all dancing and um there was a wonderful point and i think you put it out on the on the social media when the the scholars the academy lads were outside and uh, patrick said uh, i'll go in so they're in there and we get them all dancing to the wonder of you. And then there's uh, Golden Valiant sort of picking them off to dance and they look scared stiff. <laughs> but I was saying to the to lads, I thought, this is what being part of a, a player is about. You know, that community side is really important part of being a, being a player and certainly being a player here. Um, the foundation do um, a lot of work as well. On a Friday, we have community cupboard and that's... Um, very successful for me because it's bringing in um, the council, a, w a wonderful woman called Steph, who comes in from the council who d does the um, the community side for there. So she helps people to get through the council systems, whether it's housing or whatever it is. So she's been really, really helpful. But we also have the Combined Health Trust and I've started to work quite a bit at the end of last year with the Combined Health Trust. So that's the Mental Health Trust in this area. They are rated outstanding. And I am not surprised because the work that I've done with them has been so impressive. They're very, very like us. So they're very much people based. And um, Matt and Will Turner from the foundation and myself had a meeting actually this morning with them uh, for a couple of hours talking about how we can work together 
we want to work together on um, mental well-being and they've got a, a portal which they have developed that they showed us this morning and it's open to everybody it's all ages at the moment um, for referrals it's under 18s but that's going to extend to all ages again and that's to really help people to get through the the NHS mental health system and so to look for what help they need and what help they can get um, and so it, we'll put a link on um, for when this interview goes out because we really want to work alongside them um, we also talked about you know Suicide uh, was a big subject for us last year. And I've said all along that we want to do some work in that area in, in suicide awareness. And so we were talking to them about that this morning. So I don't want to do something in isolation, just to tick a box. Uh, we want to do something that um, in partnership with Combined Health Trust, um, um, because I think that partnership between us will really grow this year um, and I don't know how that will, will look yet we're going to really work on that and um, I'm really excited because you you get you know what is the expression that you, you know you get so far on your own but you get further if you're together and so to build those partnerships up which is what we do really well um, that's a major partnership we'll be building. So watch this space. We'll have more interviews about that, I'm sure. And finally, I think you've already hit the nail on the head about how important football clubs are in the community, just with that last answer. Uh, but we're coming up to the EFL Week of Action, which is collectively, as the English Football League, all football clubs shine a light on the, the work that they do that might not necessarily get as much shout about as, as mm. what happens on the pitch. But for you and your role, one, as part of the club, but also part of the EFL. For you, how important are those weeks that we can really focus on the community work that the clubs do week in, week out? Well, I think also it's my role with the EFL Trust. So I'm chair of the advisory group in that and I'm on the main board. And the week of action is so important because so much of what goes on in the 72 football clubs in the, that community side is is not publicized because they don't do it for the publicity. They do it because it's what they do. It needs doing um, and it's what makes them work. It's what makes them tick. What the week of action really does is it encourages the 72 um, community organizations and the 72 clubs to come out and be really you know, bang their drum, show people what goes on because getting that publicity out is a fine balance between bragging about what you're doing and advertising what you're doing to make sure that you get a larger reach. Um, and that's quite a hard thing to do for a lot of organisations when they're in the, in the community area. And so to do that and to showcase what we do, and I'm, when I say we, I mean the 72 to football clubs in the EFL. Um, yeah, because even if you take what we do at Port Vale and then you, you times that up by 72, it is a, an, an amazing amount of, of help. And football gives you a platform. And I, th again, I'm going to get me Carol's politics and coming, going in here. But for me, anybody in the football industry, you almost have a a duty, if you like, to use that platform and that reach and that volume that football gives you. And you see it with Marcus Rashford in what he did for free school meals. You know, and he used the fact that he was um, in the football industry, that he was, he was a player. Um, and he used that to be able to, to raise that in awareness in a way that other people couldn't do. And that's what I say to our players, um, is that their voice and their platform is huge. Um, and us as a club, in what we can do, you know, because one of the things we haven't didn't talk about earlier, which um, was remiss of me, is Christmas. 
you know, and to just to thank everybody for the, the Christmas appeal here, uh, because, you know, we delivered the 500. I know you put a film out about it, but, you know, just from me personally, um, you know, we delivered 500 meals to, you know, so many families in, in the area. And I was in this room, we're up in Robbie's room here now. Um, I was up here on Christmas Day. Um, with the, quite a few of the Shanahan family, Daryl Clark was here, you know, the fire brigade were here, not because we had a fire, but because they were helping. Um, but to to be able to to use what we had and to, to take that into the community. Um, and it'll be interesting to see when the when it comes out is what the other 71 clubs did over Christmas as well, because they did a lot, they made a big difference. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to, you have to be successful on your football pitch because if you're not, then you're in the wrong industry. That's what we are with football. Um, and I'm really happy with what we're doing on the football pitch. Having got that plate spinning well, you then spin the other plate, which is the, the community side. And then you use everything that you we're given to do as much as we can. Carol, thank you very much for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure.